today I will talk about something very related with what they have been talking about just a few minutes ago. We're able to uh, talk about predictive data analysis in ritual construction and progress monitoring and scheduling. So first, I would like to go through the basics of the data model. Then we'll talk about the, how the predictive data analysis works. We'll talk about our data framework, which is a supportive function of the predictive analysis. We'll talk about real life applications and what may be the benefits for everyone and for the industry. So normal circumstances, if you are looking for a basic simple data model, our journey time is very related with our distance, right? So if you want to make the things a little bit more complex, we want to have a look at the journey time, distance, mode of transport, departure time, and the weather. So what if, if you apply this one to our schedules? It may be related with total float, duration, number of processors, and other things. Now, and if you want to sort of group them in a certain way, we can have a look at the cluster A, which is do, not, do nothing. We have plenty of float. We don't need to worry about it. To cluster F, which we have negative float. You know, we all know that it's a bad thing for our end dates at this moment of time. So how do we group them? Like, you know, what can we make it work in our environment? If you have a look at the schedules, we have all activity names, right? All the activities has names. Basically, we can extract those names, we can clean them, we can group them, and we can start reading those properties which I've been talking about to give us a better indication of uh, what's happening in the schedule and how we can predict. Such as we can have a look at the single words, which is unigrams. If we look at access, may not be that risky, but if you combine them to multiple words, which is engrams, our permanent access notice is one of the critical activities which will bring us the biggest uncertainty and biggest risk to our schedule. Just keep in mind that, let's have a look at a few more things, how we are looking at it. So we generally report the top of the iceberg, with just with the reports and the dashboards. Everyone, everyone wants to see the reports and the dashboard, but actually there's a great component of things which is happening below, which everyone's working on. So the way that we are addressing this piece is we are looking at the, our service framework, which is set of processes and procedures. This is how we operate around the globe. We have our subject matter of experts and digital capabilities to bring us the success, which is uh, we have the right technology to connect to P6, unifiers, Econex, Excel, SharePoint. We can just get all the data together. Uh, we have analytics capability to aggregate the data. We can visualize it utilizing industry standards. It may be one of them is Power BI, which I will show the examples. And we can have the right people who can interpret this data and you know, it's always supported by the right processes, right lesson learned um, about how we are using it. Basically, we can extract the data from in the source, then we can automate the quality checks, which is very important for any kind of data that you are receiving. Otherwise, you know, uh, you will have challenges. We can aggregate the data, analyze it, and further, we can build on the predictive analysis, such as simple things that we are doing with based on the activity name and the total float, successor, predecessor, all those kind of attributes, which gives us um, which resolve the pain point of lack of um, integration and visibility of the data, which also helps with the um, inaccuracy on length duration process of the KPIs, and it helps us to um, resolving difficulty to understand where the risk likely to happen, because you really want to know in an analytic basis where it's coming from. And it just, um, and it helps in a kind of a non-biased approach, because you set the rules, any data model is better than having subjective approach. And it helps us to keep it our schedule because it's the primary model that we are using when we are looking at the time basis uh, in a certain quality. If you look at the real life example, this is, this is one of the ones which we had, one of the projects, we have like a half, more than half of the project has a very similar model, which shows on the top, you can see the process, you can see your critical paths, your cost, and at the same time, as we upload the schedule or any kind of data, we can have a look at the quality pieces, which is the SMA 14 standards, which we apply and more. So we can utilize our risk model and we can utilize our, let's say, health, salt and safety statistics, quality statistics. Plus, in addition to that, we can utilize our predictive analysis. And the predictive analysis, which I was talking about, is shows kind of in the, the color when it gets darker, it gets more risky. Each from update to update what happens in the schedules, and I can see where the risk lies in. Uh, for instance, in this specific case, I can see that my testing and commissioning may be in a, a bit of a darker color, so I see that I need to pay attention to it at this moment of time, and I need to make sure that 
uh, things are happening so in a, in a proper way. And I also, in our project, we also implement Halo Builder because, you know, as we see in this piece, we can see all the data analytics, but sometimes we are trying to remove the subjectivity and you have an eye on the ground. We utilize Halo Builder at this moment of time. It's basically a self stick with a 360 camera and its areas are already identified where you want to take the uh, photos that you can see in the layout. So, and we can compare what has been before and what's happening now. Um, so it really, basically it really helps us to, first of all, uh, the benefits are around the people, use of the technology and train our people on the job. And this is one of the things which you have been talking about before, having the right people and train the people on the process. Uh, that helps us to attract better talent to be honest, because the things are a bit more exciting rather than just doing a classical way. It helps us undistilled progress information and the cost of data information, helps us with the HSE information. We don't need to be there all the time. Uh, we can arrange our resourcing in a flexible way, which helps us and the clients to provide a, a cost efficient systems. And it's rather quick to deploy, like all the things which I'm talking about, it takes 24 hours for to deploy for any, any of the projects that we are in, given the processes are set up right. And of course, it creates further opportunities to transform the inf um, industry by creating further demand of those kind of systems, because like, you know, this is, this is very practical, very easy to deploy, and creates further opportunity to, to create better synergies which we are not aware of at this moment of time. Because the more that we use technology, the more we get used to it, and the more we get used to it, we'll start using more. So I have two questions. Sure. Uh, the first question is, what's the um, integrated platform that you use to connect all of this together? So we have a data lake. Uh, we, we throw everything to SQL Server. Can you say that again? An, an SQL Server. We have an SQL Server. We connect everything to your data and create a data lake under the major SQL Server. So we collect all the, uh, all the data over there, and we withdraw the data using WBS, CBS, EPS, using those structures at the moment of time. So that's how you store the data. Yes. But in order to have all your platform connected together, yes. because all of these are different platforms. Yes, absolutely. So what's the, what's the technology that you're, uh, you're we, using? We, we uh, work together with Microsoft, utilizing Microsoft Azure in the background to provide us database services. So we're able to suck all the data in and connect all the data all together. So it's a Microsoft yes. Azure. A second question is, um, so you, you're, you're a project management company, Faithful and Gold. Yes. So, so how do you integrate the contractors to this platform? Because so, your, your technology is savvy from a PMO point of view. Yes. But connecting to this region from a technology mm -hmm. uh, connectivity to the regular contractors, how do they adapt to your technology platform? So they gave us standard, we create the standard templates for the Excel, P6, MS project, everything else. We determine WBSs, everything is sucked up in a standard form. We are talking about data uh, uh, structuring, and then we can integrate everything all together. So we can actually give access to our contractor to upload the data, so we can see everything and visible to everyone, including CEO yourself. 